9.05, and I'm going to call this meeting of the Planning Commission to order. Uh, first establish that we have a quorum present, and we do. Everybody's here. Uh, so first item is the consent agenda. The Commission may request for a consent agenda item to be moved to the regular agenda for presentation and public comment. Otherwise, the consent agenda will be considered in one vote. All items on the consent agenda have been recommended for approval by staff. With no opposition received to date, since some items on the consent agenda may require a public hearing, the Commission will accept public comment on any item on the consent agenda in one public hearing. Item A is consideration of the September 19th Planning Commission minutes. Does anyone else, or I'm not going to read all these items, do, does anyone want to pull anything off the consent agenda? All right, I'm going to open it up for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak on the consent agenda items, please come forward, state your name and address or single member district. All right, I'm going to close public comment and take a motion. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Regular agenda, subdivision plats, the Planning Commission has final authority for approval. Appeals may be directed to the City Council. Item E, FP 22-27, WIT subdivision, a request for approval of the final plat of the WIT subdivision being 8.307 acres located southeast of Fruitland Farm Road and West FM 2105 and variances from the Land Development and Subdivision Ordinances Chapter 103A1. <laughs> to allow an existing deficient right-of-way width less than required from Chapter 103A2 to allow an existing paving width less than required for Fruitland Farm Road. All right. Thanks, Chair Stribling. Uh, Planning Commissioners, Jeff Fisher, Chief Planner. Uh, this is FP 2227, the width subdivision. It's on 8.307 acres. Uh, it's northeast of Fruitland Farm Road and Cactus Lane. It's in the ETJ, so there's no zoning on this. Um, no notification was required, uh, so there's no district or, or neighborhood yet. Um, but the, basically what they wanted to do is cut um, this area in here where the red was, was a bunch of lots that looked very similar to the ones up here as part of the low rants subdivision. Uh, this plot was recently vacated, and so the owner owns uh, this lot now, and so wants to create essentially two lots out of what was originally um, several platted lots along here and uh, a street that was also uh, part of that plat that was never built. So that goes away. Uh, we've got uh, that lot, which is lot two, and then the remainder is lot one where there's a house on. My understanding from um, talking to the applicant is they'll keep the house on lot one and then uh, they could either, if they want to, they could sell lot two separately. So it's two lots, uh, 0.346 acres. Um, there are two variances requested. So Fruitland Farm in the ETJ is deficient in both right-of-way and paving width. So the variances requested are to maintain a 37-foot right-of-way. Um, the new subdivision standards for streets require a minimum of 52 uh, feet required. So they're a little bit short. And then the paving width, uh, there are only 23 feet uh, and 36 feet are required. So you're going to be voting on the plat today as well as the two variances. These are the photos looking north on Fruitland Farm Road and south. Uh, so this is an existing street, uh, fairly ranch-style homes, uh, rural area, but uh, starting to grow over time. Uh, the streets currently are deficient, as I mentioned, and do not have uh, curbs or gutters yet. This is northeast at the property. This is southeast at the property. So let's look at the two variances. Uh, the variance for the right-of-way. Uh, we are not in support of, of the variance for the right-of-way. Uh, we believe that uh, adequate right-of-way is needed over time. We need the additional right-of-way as the area continues to grow. Maybe at this point there are no plans to annex that I understand, but over time it could be annexed. You've also got lots on the west side and the east side of the street, very large um, either unplatted tracks or platted tracks that are, are going to be cut up over time, and that's going to lead to more traffic. So we want the additional right-of-way. Uh, also, it gives us more room for maintenance of any uh, future utilities. Uh, there's no hardship. The topography is relatively flat, uh, so there would be no hindrance to providing the additional right-of-way, uh, and not providing the right-of-way would, would be in contravention to our land development and subdivision ordinance purpose statements. On the paving width, same thing. We're in denial. Uh, this road is, is deficient in two ways. It doesn't meet the minimum in the subdivision ordinance of of a minimum of 36 feet, it's only 23, and 
it doesn't meet the minimum minimum, which is 26 feet for, for any road in St. Angelo. So we believe that the, um, the adequate paving width is needed, again, for the same reasons. Area is going to continue to grow. There's going to be more annexations. Uh, there's going to be more um, lots being cut up and more infill development, and it's going to put more strain on the street network. Uh, so again, uh, no hardship uh, on the topography, and again, the purpose statements uh, require that those streets are, are safe and functional. So we recommend approval of the plat, no issue there, subject to four conditions, but we are in denial of the variance to maintain the 37-foot right-of-way and the denial of the variance to maintain the 23-foot street width. So uh, what we are recommending is they don't have to pave the entire minimum width because the street's already sort of, the paving is already sort of in the middle and the right-of-way. So when the developers on the west side of the street go to the develop, they can give the, the other half of what's left. So just the incremental half, which is seven and a half feet of right of way, and the incremental half of paving, which is six and a half. Let me go to the conditions real quick. Um, so copy of tax certificate, dedicate the right of way or variance, dedicate the paving with your variance. On the paving width, uh, we are okay with a performance agreement. Uh, we understand that putting in the street right now might create an irregular jog in the street. And also you've got, um, puts that strain on the developer in the short run. Uh, so I think we're okay with the, we are okay with the deferral um, to a performance agreement uh, until such time as there's any improvements on the properties to the west. So if the people on the west side of the street adjacent to them, but on the west side of Fruitland Farm go to replat or, or plat or cut up the lots, add more development, um, or a uh, city improvement project, we come in and we wanna widen the street. Either way, they're responsible for the cost just of that six and a half feet. So this, will, this at least will kick it down the road for a little while um, for them. The fourth condition is the drainage study. That's the whole condition there in case it, it came up, but I, don't, I think we're, we're pretty clear. Does anybody has any questions or comments on that? See, I put that red star there to, to say, I'm only gonna go there in case somebody asks, but here we go. Anyone have questions for the staff? All right, Jeff, thank you. I'm going to open it up for public comment. If you're wishing to speak, please state your name and address or single member district. Good morning, Russell with SKG Engineering. Um, this is outside the city limits, so we don't have a single member district. Thank you, Jeff, to report for this one. Um, and Jeff hit a lot of the important topics of, about this property. Mr. Witt currently owns this entire area. Uh, he has his house down there on lot one. Uh, he's looking to convey lot two to a friend's son so that he can um, build a home there. As Jeff had indicated, uh, a portion of this was previously platted as 10 lots with a, a street to it. So, so if you step back and look at this, we're really reducing potential traffic generation kind of through this process. So. So that's why we really asked for the, the two variants request on, on this deal. We, we spoke with Mr. Witt. He's here today um, if, if need be. Um, and he's willing to, to give up and understands maybe the need for the right-of-way dedication. So we're, we're willing to concede and, and go ahead and dedicate the additional seven and a half feet for, for right-of-way. But um, we would ask for, for the variants um, from the street width improvements. It, you know, and we appreciate the city kind of offering, if you will, this performance and agreement and, and deferment of, of the construction of that, but, but really it just kind of puts this burden on the property that, that just kind of hangs out there and you never know if or when you're gonna be hit with, you know, hey, you gotta come spend this this amount of money to widen the street when when we're really not going to be increasing traffic on the Fruitland Farm Road um, with this development. We're really kind of taking it back a step by, by not putting 10 lots on the ground, but in reality just we're going from potentially 10 really down to one. So, so we don't see a need that, that this developer should be burdened with what we would really envision to be if the city ever comes in and annexes this area and it, it grows, that would really be more of a public infrastructure type improvement being that this is identified as, as, a, as a collector street that, that should move a lot of traffic, but this property is not the one creating that traffic. So, um, you know, if, if, if there is the burden, 
placed on that, then, then Mr. Witt may say, you know what, it's not worth it. We're just going to leave the property set a as it is. But, you know, that's not really in, in the best interest, I think, for, for anybody. So we would ask for uh, your approval of this with the approval of the variance, at least, on the street width improvements. And would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Russell? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak on this? Please come forward. All right, I'm going to close public comment. Anyone wish to share their thoughts or, or make a motion? So the, the current road width is 22 feet. Is that correct, Jeff? What's the current road width? Current road width is 23 feet. 23 feet. Yes. That's correct, yes. So they're asking for, can you go back one slide or a couple? There was a, oh, okay. there was a slide that showed the, the amount. Okay, yeah. There it is. So seven and a half feet in right of way and six and a half feet in paving is what the city Correct. is. Correct. So basically requiring. if the if fifth so starting with let's go to the paving width. So if thirty six is the minimum and they're at twenty three, that's thirteen feet short. So half of thirteen is six and a half. So that's what they'd be responsible for. How long is that road? It's pretty long. Um, I would have, I'm trying to remember now, I had it in my staff report. I can get it if you need it. It's, it's at least a mile. It goes from uh, city limits all the way up to basically where Chadburn kind of curves. So it's, it's a pretty lengthy road. Now, at this time, it's 20, I've measured it. It's roughly the same all the way along. Yeah. But the, I think the concern is, is as it grows over time. So your decision today is really, it's, it's one applicant with, um, and Russell's right, it is less lots today. But again, versus over time and, and how that, that plays out. So we understand. Okay. Anyone else want to share thoughts or make a motion? I make a motion to approve as presented. I second that. Yeah, with the variances. With the variances. You want to grant the variances or deny them? I'll grant them. Grant them both. And is it, the right-of-way variance as well as the paving width? Yeah. Okay. That looks good. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor to approve with granting variances for both right-of-way and paving. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. So I think we'll need a show of hands. Yeah. I'm not sure that was so, clear who... On for side. those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. So there's four in favor and opposed, three. Okay, so it passes. Okay. All right, next case. RP 22-36, re first replat of Block 1, Section 1, Shannon Long-Term Care Facility, SMD 6. Request for approval of a first replat in Block 1, Section 1, Shannon Long-Term Care Facility being 14.985 acres located northwest of Appaloosa Trail and FM 2288, and a variance from the Land Development and Subdivision Ordinance, Chapter 103A1, allowing an existing right-of-way width less than required for Appaloosa Trail. Okay, thanks Chair Stribling in Planning Commission. So this is the existing Shannon Long-Term Care Facility. They are cutting up uh, the lot and uh, not sure if they're hanging on to it or selling it. It's very similar to the previous case in the sense that, except not counting those extra lots, but in this case it was just one lot, they're going into two. So the total acreage is 14.895 acres. The zoning is CG. Um, when they did their original plat, um, I've just drawn out the sidewalks here, so the orange area indicates the current sidewalks. Um, this is not for 
discussion today, but just for your information, um, we have re requested under the new sidewalk um, standards, they will be responsible for sidewalks along Appaloosa Trail and then up FM uh, 2288. This one's very straightforward though. Um, the only other thing is there is one variance. When the street was built, um, the, right, the pavement is fine, but the right of way is 43 feet and needs to be 52. And I believe from my research, when, the, when this was originally platted, the, um, the pre-2000 subdivision ordinance said that only the primary frontage had to meet the standards. There was a way around that. So I think they probably treated 2288 as the primary frontage because the street standards were the same. So um, this is an infill, essentially. Uh, it's already got curb and gutter on, on both sides. So we are in support of that, that right-of-way variance. That's what you're looking at today. This is west along uh, Appaloosa Trail, and this is north at the new lot. So there's the, the uh, Shannon facility there. Um, east and further east on Appaloosa Trail. Kind of does a thing where it does get wider as you get close to FM 2288, and there's a, um, an island with some trees in there, uh, but it narrows as you get towards the front of the property. And then this is uh, north on FM 2288, so text dot sidewalk um, plan stop right at that corner. And so we just want them to extend that, that sidewalk um, further to the north up here. Uh, so variants, uh, we are in support of the right-of-way variants. The original lots were platted the same right-of-way, already curved, functions adequately. Um, there is a 20-foot um, maintenance easement that's in there, so they can use that if they need to do any um, uh, easement on the, or do any maintenance work on that street or the utilities. Will not vary any applicable ordinances. So we recommend approval of a first read plot in Block 1, Section 1, Shannon Long-Term Care Facility, subject to the seven conditions in your report, and approval of the variance to maintain a right-of-way width of 43 feet in lieu of the required 52. Uh, conditions, copy of tax certificate, uh, sidewalk plans adjacent to Lot 1, uh, dedicate four and a half feet of additional right-of-way or the variance. Again, staff is in support of the variance. Uh, install sewer main and required service connections, install water service lines or deferral, Certify both lots of the capacity to mitigate um, stormwater design. I'll let, um, if that does come up, I'll let engineering speak to that. A little complicated. There were some existing detention basins there, but my understanding is they can, they'll work out those drainage issues. And then number seven, a note on the plot, um, fire hydrants and department access may need to be provided. Uh, and then the sidewalks, um, they give us the plans before the plat's recorded, but they, uh, they do not have to put those in. Um, those are deferred until final occupancy, just because we don't know what's going to be developed on that lot. Any questions? Anyone have questions for the staff? All right. Thank you, Jeff. We're going to open it up for public comment. Good morning. <clears throat> Russell with SKG. Um, so the, the, the primary purpose of this is Sh Shannon and Encompass entered into an agreement uh, whenever they built this long-term care facility here. Um, and so now they're at the point, apparently within that agreement, they, they prorate their property taxes on the land based on square footage or something. And so they wanted to, really this was a way to create two separate lots so that they could then create two separate tax parcels um, and, and not have to do this proration stuff anymore out of the deal. So they asked us to bring this forward and, and, and see if we could get that approved. They're, they re Shannon really has no immediate plans that, that I'm aware of to, to place anything on lot one. So, so really that was the primary need or request for this. The, and for the most part, we're okay with everything. There, there is kind of the one issue that they talked about, which is the, the sewer main extension. Uh, there's really not sewer service to lot one. There is sewer service to lot two that comes in kind of from the west, but because of topography, uh, we're going to either have to bring sewer in from the south, um, kind of in cross Appaloosa, or there's a, a sewer main on the east side of 2288 um, that we'd have to extend across. We, we, we'd looked at all of this early on when, when they were looking to place the Encompass facility there, so we have some concepts um, developed for extending sewer to lot one, just not of a fashion that would that would has been approved by the city engineer. So, so really what we would like to do and propose if there's a way that we could at least defer or, or if we need to do uh, some sort of per performance agreement um, between the city and Shannon that would allow um, the plat to be recorded and then 
the design, I think they could probably see their way to get it designed for the sewer extension, but at a minimum, the construction of that sewer main and just have that deferred until they get ready to build and develop on lot one. So, you know, the, the, we all, they all recognize and know that the sewer is going to, they're going to have to go reach off site to bring sewer onto it. it it's just kind of across from 2288, so that can be brought across. They just don't want to have to have that expense now for something that, that could set for some untold number of years. So uh, I think everything else we can get worked out with engineering. When we designed this originally for the Encompass, we did the full drainage study. It was submitted to engineering. They approved the detention pond and drainage studies on, on both lots. So, so that documentation should be easy to do. The sidewalk design, um, Jeff, thank you for doing that design for us. We'll submit that to engineering. <laughs> See if they'll approve that, um, and then just be happy. Smart today. <laughs> be happy to answer any questions. So, Russell, uh, it looks like item five. Can you go to the the notes, please, Jeff, or Russell? I'll try. <laughs> I'll... Right. Oh. Uh, so, item four. Yes. Install sewer main and required service connections. Uh, is the is the request in here sufficient for the request of the deferral or not? I guess is my question. Uh, and I don't know that it is. The water says request the Department of Public Works the deferral of such requirement to a later stage in development. Ah, here we go. Hi, Kevin Pate, City Engineer Interim. Yes, sir. Uh, I am not opposed to what Russell is discussing. Uh, the deferrals. Uh, Kevin, come. Sorry, can you make sure you're in the we mic can, there? We can look at the deferrals after this planning commission. It's really not relevant to this planning commission's meeting. Perfect. But we'll negotiate with Russell on that. Okay. Shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. Well, five, we already can ask for the deferral. That, that's that's clear cut for um, commercial property, water services. It's been pretty standard to <clears throat> defer those um, water services because one, we don't know typically for commercial the size and location. So uh, it, that's kind of been a longstanding tradition for those types of deferrals. So I think it's really for the, the sewer main. Um, the sidewalk, I, I think, in Jeff, I think the design we could do now, we'd like to defer that, but if we have to, I, but I think sidewalks then would be deferred as well till, till that there is construction on lot one. Yeah, and just to clarify that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the, number one, the sidewalks are not subject to review with the plat uh, right. under the new ordinance. Uh, but under that new ordinance, it does automatically allow deferral to the construction. I mean, to to something happening, development on the property. So they no longer have to request that. Um, okay. And, and I guess just for clarification on that number four, we, uh, I think if your motion included adding the similar language as the water condition that uh, basically says allows them to request public works to defer the requirement. That okay. makes it clear that that's one of the options they have. Right. And that is uh, built in already in the full condition, which is in the staff report, so they can do the deferral. So we do, we could keep that language as it is. I just actually hold on. Let me let me make sure. No, that's the water. Okay, it's so not, we would have to put that. Yeah, in. I was yeah. going to say it's not clear yeah. in mine, but okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this case? I'm going to close public comment. Uh, so, if someone's making a motion here, we want to we want the language regarding the uh, deferral from the Department of Public Works to be the same on Note Four as it is on Five. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a shot at making uh, <laughs> this happen. So, um, I motion to approve with the deferral of line item number five, um, or sorry, number four, um, to make sure that it's reworded similar to the water line service, um, that it could be deferred, as well as sidewalks being deferred until construction. And the variance on three? 
in granting the variance on right of way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Second. second. <laughs> okay. We have a motion and a second to approve as presented uh, with the addition of the public works deferral language in item four. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's seven zero. Related comprehensive plan amendments and rezonings. The City Council has final authority for approval of comprehensive plan amendments and rezonings. Item A, northeast of Ogden Road, West 37th Street. Do you want me to read both of these in or? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, CP 2205-290 East 37th Street, a request for approval of an amendment to the comprehensive plan changing certain lands from the rural to the neighborhood future land use being 1.064 acres located at the northeast corner of Ogden <coughs> Road and West 37th Street and Z22-20-290 East 37th Street a request for approval of a rezoning from ranch and estate to single family residential zoning district being 1.064 acres located at the northeast corner of Ogden Road and 37th Street. Good morning, Commissioner. Sherry Bailey, Senior Planner. It's nice to see everyone again. You. Uh, you have before you, as was indicated, the comprehensive plan amendment where they have request, or requested that it go from rural to neighborhood for essentially two lots at 290 West 37th Street. They're also requesting the zoning change from rural and estate to single family residence RS1. This is in District 2, Mr. Thompson's district, and the neighborhood is Riverside. Before you is on the left the comprehensive plan or vision plan for this area, and on the right is the zoning district. As you can see on the comprehensive plan, the entire area is has not had any incursions into it at all as of yet so it's a, a pretty stark uh, rural area the intent is to, was to keep it rural in the comprehensive plan um, and so far there have just not been any requests to incur into that area and the neighbors in the area seem to prefer it that way and that is also true with the zoning for that area. We did receive three notices that objected to this request. One of them was outside the notice area and two of them were inside. We sent out 12 notification letters um, and assumed that the word would get around and that's the reason that we heard from the one that was outside the area. We show no in support as of at this point. This is a picture of the second area. It's an abstract area and right next to it where the house is, is the uh, abstract area that contains a, a family home. And this is the applicant's property. He is wanting to split this actually into three lots to build uh, homes on two lots. Staff had looked at all of the seven issues that one needs to review when you're considering a comprehensive plan amendment and an accompanying zone uh, change and evaluated each of them. Staff does believe that this proposal is not consistent with the comprehensive plan and that there have been no incursions into the rural land use area. And this request is for a very small area, which is inconsistent with any past actions. Um, number two, the proposed zoning is significantly more dense than the rest of the area. Number three, the RS1 zoning is smaller in size and more dense, as we indicated. Number four, the applicant is seeking to introduce a change in, to that area that just has not seen any development into the area. It is a substantially rural development with a lot of agricultural animal um, area in there. Uh, number five, this would open the door in the area that has not been impacted by the effects of higher density. And number six, this small development 
is not meeting an identified uh, need in the area. And then number seven, the existing development patterns are well established for rural development and these three smaller lots would not be a logical or orderly pattern of development for the area. Given that, staff is recommending denial of both the comprehensive plan 2205 and the zoning 2220 request at 290 West 37th Street. And with that, I'll close my presentation. Are there any questions? Do we have questions for the staff? Could you go back to the aerial view of the, of the lots? Whoops, going the wrong way. Okay, it's very helpful. So uh, I'm assuming West 37th Street is the street line that kind of divides the rural and neighborhood yes, it is. areas. Yes. Uh, but development in the the area south has not been uh, very intense either. Is that what you're indicating? Exactly. Predominantly that. rural. It's a, it's a if you look at the development south of the rural area into the neighborhood area, even that area is large lot development. It's not generally small lot development here, and that's why we got one of the objections. Um, it happens to be a fairly large lot that's almost five acres. And he said in his objection that he likes the rural area, that's why they went there, and he doesn't want to see an incursion that starts bringing uh, traffic, higher traffic into the area. Uh, you, you indicated that there were three objections. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have written statements from those objections, or what, on what basis have they uh, both objected? Of them, both of them said the same thing, that they liked the rural uh, character of the neighborhood, and they didn't want to see increased traffic. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have questions for the staff? I mean, I'm probably going to be the odd man out on this one, but... Um, Looking at the previous case that we had on Fruitland Farm, you know, we had that one piece of property and above that th there were 10 lots and that was most likely at one point in time ranch and estate. So I just kind of wonder how this is that much different than... I think the big you know? difference between that and this is that this is a, a more established area. This is more developed. I mean, Fruitland Farms... And I mean, it's also in the ETJ versus being in the city limits. Those would be the big differences that I see. Any other questions? The applicant's representative is here. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Sherry. All right, we're going to open it up for public comment. If you wish to speak, please come forward, state your name and single member district or address. <clears throat> Erica Wildey, Carter Fentress Engineering. Um, there's a couple of things that the staff's rationale for denial, I wanted to... Uh, address one there not being a community need i think we can all agree that uh development in this area and affordable homes is a huge community need where we're proposing two more homes um also what i wanted to point out i don't know how this works how do i go back there we go is there a pointer on here okay these lots, and doing research, these lots right here that are in the rural area <clears throat> do not meet the current r &E, uh, requirements. So in the event that they ever wanted to do something different with their property, they too will have to come through and, or, uh, and request this, possibly being denied to make any changes to their property. Um, to me, it would make sense that since we already have some non-conforming lots here, um, make this the buffer between the RS1 and the ranch and estate. If we were facing, if we were proposing these uh, properties to face Ogden Street, I could see where there might be a little bit of difference. I also want to point out that the city um, on the thoroughfare plan, Ogden Street is uh, marked as a arterial, a minor, a minor, minor arterial. 
Um, so the fact that that's marked as a minor arterial tells me that they were anticipating more traffic through that neighborhood. Um, I don't believe it should be a minor arterial. It goes, their th future thoroughfare plan goes straight through some buildings and developed lots, but it just, if they are wanting that. Sounds then, like it needs to be updated, Eric. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so to me, it would make sense to uh, make this little area across the street from already a single family residential district a buffer zone. Um, Erica, can you point which ones are the non conforming again? Just the quick one I did, the quick search I did. I believe this one, this one, this one, and this one do not meet the standard. Kind of right on that edge. Okay. So um, I ask that you please approve this um, with uh, so that we can get these homes built and get some more affordable homes on the ground. Thank, Thank you, you, Erica. Mr. Chairman, may I address that issue? Yes, ma'am, please. Can? Yes, all of those lots are ab abstract <laughs> lots. Um, most of them are older lots, and yes, they are smaller, but at that point, uh, a home was being built that was not required to get, um, to be platted. The lots, the newer, newer lots that have come in on a subdivision development which are to the west of this and just off the picture. All of those were held at the one acre minimum and they came in just a few years ago and they are all platted. Okay. What are the sizes of the lots, Sherry, that they're proposing? <laughs> the presently? Currently and then what will they be after they're divided? Okay. Right now, I think the largest one is just over a half acre, and then uh, the smaller one, uh, 0.6, I think. Is it? Yeah. Okay. And so that's what they anticipated 000, 50 by 100. Right. Okay. Thank you. I think one of staff's primary concerns here is, is this small encroachment into this area. Uh, if we were to look at this larger area and say, yeah, this is an area we want to transition from more rural lots to smaller lots, that might be an appropriate answer. Uh, but we would probably want to have discussions with the larger rural area, send out notices and, uh, you, you know, talk to the whole neighborhood, basically. Are you ready for a transition to denser urban development? Yes. And I think that for me, I yes. Think already not meeting rural standards so why wouldn't we just I mean if they want to do something to their property they're going to have to plat it then it's not going to meet the comprehensive plan so why wouldn't we just take the initiative to make this area um, an RS1 when there's already lots that aren't platted that if they want to make a change add anything to their property they're going to have to so why not start the, start the precedence here the concern I have looking at this is that we, we have a clear dividing line. But before I go into my comments, I, let's, is there anyone else that wishes to speak in public comment? Are we in public comment? Yes, sir, we are. Um, Tom Thompson, single member district two. Um, I'm here representing four people on Ransom Road and I told them I would come watch this. Um, I see the point, what Eric is talking about is over there, it's actually on Great Creek Road and how those go over the two that came in were um, needing to hold to the ranch and estate where it's a minimum of at least an acre. Yes, sir. All of us over here on this area, we bought there and lived there, and most of us have 1.94 acre lots. So there's our houses on one. We don't have to worry about somebody building behind us, and we like the rural part of that. I see the, the point to it, but I wish we would go with staff's suggestion here and maintain the rural cushion that we have. I think there's a very clear concise line on what we have, yeah. and we'd like it to stay that way. Thank you, sir. You bet. All right, anyone else wishing to speak? <clears throat> All right, I'm going to close public comment. And uh, I, I was actually headed the same direction as Mr. Thompson. Uh, it, looking at this map, we do have clear dividing lines uh, for the neighborhood boundaries and development density. And uh, <clears throat> I hate to encroach on on a rural area uh, and invite 
<clears throat> excuse me, invite um, greater density like this, especially with a couple of lots that meet the minimum requirements for single family. They're about 5,000 each. So these aren't half acre lots, these are tiny lots. <clears throat> so, and I can't, I, I understand Erica's comment about uh, other development that's um, maybe non-compliant with current zoning. You know, that's, that's been a point of emphasis <laughs> Uh, on, my, on my behalf for, for years up here, uh, we've had a lot of illegal development that's occurred in our community, and I'd like to, to stop it. Um, I don't know when this was done or how it was done, but I can't look at this map and say, because a bunch of illegal development was done or non-compliant development was done, that that's going to factor in the basis of my decision. I have to look at what should be there, and I think that I think lower density development makes sense in this area. I don't think that invading into this rural subdivision makes sense. Does so anyone else want to share thoughts or make a motion? motion to deny both cases as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So that's going to be 6-1. Rezonings. City Council has final authority for approval of rezonings. Z22-21 northwest of North Marie Street, uh, Beacon Street. A request for approval of a rezoning from the single-family residential zoning district to the two-family residential zoning district being 0.314 acres located at the northwest corner of North Marie Street and Beacon Street. Um, Mr. Chairman and the Planning Commissioners, as you indicated, this is a request to rezone the four lots that are identified on the screen of, and to rezone those lots. The whole entire area is 0.314 acres. As you indicated, it's on the northeast corner of North Marie and Beacon Street. It's in District 4, Lucy Gonzalez's district, and it's in the Paul Ann neighborhood. On the left is the uh, future land use for the area, and on the right is the present zoning. I'd like to draw attention to the future land use because, as you can see, this is a very mixed area. It's transitional, it's commercial, and it's neighborhood, um, and it's where a number of uh, neighborhoods come together, a number of zoning districts come together, and land uses and it's always in a state of flux, and the people around there seem to like it that way and have been able to utilize the area uh, in very creative ways. This is an older area of the town, and the four lots that we're talking about um, on the right, you can see, are 25-foot lots. So they're looking to rezone it so that they can use those lots in a creative way for uh, duplexes. We sent out 23 notices. We received one in support, none in opposition. In looking at the rationale, the proposed zoning is to family, which does allow them to construct uh, duplex units by combining two of the 25-foot lots, and that is their intent to do, and they'll be bringing the flat forward, I believe. Um, the zoning is compatible with the existing comprehensive plan. That's why there were no changes. Uh, the, number two, the proposed zoning is RS2, as I indicated. Uh, the rest of the block is a mix of zoning, everything from RS1 to light manufacturing to general commercial, which is on the other end of the lot. So this is a very transitional district. 
Um, and I want to emphasize that the whole entire area is an area of change, and, it, and it's open to that, and there's been support for that in the past. Um, the community need identified in this is, is uh, moderate and low income housing, and that is the intent of the builder in this case, and what he proposes to do, and he has done a number in other areas um, of the city. And the existing pattern shows, as I indicated, transitional area. This infill project is in the older section of town, utilizing what were pre previously really unusable lots. And with that, I'll close my presentation and answer any questions you might have. Do you want to have questions for the staff? All right, we're going to open it up for public comment. Thank you, Sherry. Erica Wildy for Carter Pinterest Engineering, and we just ask that you um, approve this as presented. Thank you, Erica. Anyone else wish to speak on this case? All right, I'm going to close public comment. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7 0. All right, next item, uh, 22, Z2222, southwest of South Pierce Street and West Borgard Avenue. Um, Ms. Jackson's going to recuse herself from this case. A request for approval of a rezoning from neighborhood commercial zoning district to low-rise multifamily zoning district being 0.413 acres located at the southwest corner of South Pierce Street and West Borgard Avenue. Thank you, Chair Stribling, Planning Commission. Uh, so our next case today uh, is to request changing the zoning from neighborhood commercial to low-rise multifamily residential. I understand they're going to try to have six units here. So the, the brief um, background on this is it remained a commercial parking lot since 1950. There was an old um, special permit with the city. It was one of the very first cases in San Angelo just to allow the parking lot to be there. And, and that's what it's been ever since. Um, about four years ago, uh, other applicants came in and rezoned it to, uh, for retail um, to CN. They were planning to do a, a retail business there. Uh, they ended up finding a different location, I understand, and so it just, again, it just stayed there as, as commercial. So now um, they want to rezone it uh, back, but they want to rezone it a little bit higher than RS1 up to uh, RM1, which would allow the, um, the six um, residential units there. This is on 0 0.413 acres. It's at the southwest corner of Pierce Street and West Beauregard um, and Ms. Hesse Smith's District 5 Santa Rita neighborhood. The future land use is neighborhood center. Um, so the neighborhood center does allow um, some uh, CN zoning, but it also allows um, multifamily units as well. It's kind of an in-between, so that uh, that would allow and support the, the RM1 if it meets all the other standards. Here's the current CN. 27 notices were mailed out. We did not receive any responses. This is looking north, so there's a, a similar to the previous case, um, staff is in support of this request. It acts as an effective transition. When you start going um, south, uh, you've got, uh, and west, you've got residential, and when you go east and north, you've got commercial. So having some, uh, a small scale multifamily development in, in between is, is a good transition of, of land use. So going north, as I mentioned, is retail, and then going east, so there's a barbecue restaurant across the street, and then as you go east, there's uh, a retail um, plaza. This is the current um, uh, parking lot that's been sitting there for a long time. So the good news is it's already paved, uh, so they can uh, put buildings over it, and there's already a privacy fence that was built um, adjacent to the residential unit. So a lot of that groundwork was already done. Um, at some point, if they go to uh, develop this, uh, we would want a sidewalk along um, the front of the property. There is one right now, but it's deficient. It's only three feet wide, so they have to, we'd have to work with them at, at some point and upgrade that, that existing sidewalk. Okay, so rationale, again, this is an effective transition between residential, low rise, and then uh, more commercial, heavier development um, to the east. Uh, it's compatible with the surrounding area, includes single family homes and a retail plaza to the east. 
Uh, there's a Concho Valley Transit bus stop one block east at Fillmore and Beauregard. We research, so it's right on the Concho Transit line. So anybody that um, doesn't have a vehicle and wants to take a public transit can get downtown or across the city very quickly. Um, again, similar to the previous case, um, uh, our 2019 Resintel study that was that was conducted, um, still fairly recent. So we've we've looked at this a lot. They um, many many times in that study they talked about middle housing. So the two, three, and four units, something sort of an in between, not a huge apartment building, uh, and then not um, single family is is the type of multifamily development that we're looking for in, in, in San Angelo. And we're just um, just short trying to, to accommodate that, that market. So this would also serve um, that purpose as well, be a good infill development that's along major transit corridors and be able to connect those residents across the city. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from neighborhood commercial CN to low rise multifamily residential RM1 being 0.413 acres at the southwest corner of South Pierce and West Beauregard Avenue. And that concludes our presentation. All right, anyone have questions for the staff? <clears throat> what, are the, uh, what are the high requirements for, or limitations for RM1? For RM1, I believe is uh, 35 feet or two stories. Two story? Mm -hmm. There's also a, a maximum density of 25 units an acre. Um, so I think based on that acreage, it comes out to about 10. So they're proposing up, up to six, so they would be within the density provisions as well. But yes, two, two floors or 35 feet. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'm gonna open this up for public comment. Good morning, Karen Hesse-Smith, single member district five. And I would just like to add another question to this conversation, and it is, I would like to know whether or not this would be designated as low income housing, okay. Rega regardless of the other description. Could we please address that as well? Thank you. Good morning, Erica Wilde again, Carter Fentress Engineering. Um, this will not be a low income housing development or multifamily development. It's going to be six units. Um, I don't believe I don't believe we're going to go up to two stories. Um, basically, I for one am excited to see this ugly parking lot be turned into something. Um, and I just ask that the staff approves as um, presented. Thank you, Erica. If anyone else wish to speak on this case, please come forward. All right, I'm going to close public comment. So I'm very familiar with this area. Um, I don't live too far from it. And um, the, the primary concern I have is the density. Um, I, I think two-story development in this area would not be good. Um, I think single-story would be great. And I think multifamily, um, or duplex or that type of development is, is a good fit for this location. I just don't wanna see a big two-story monstrosity that towers over. All the, all the homes in this area are single family. Uh, one story, excuse me, one story single family. Um, and so I, I'm just, I'd be upset if uh, I had a two-story, you know, massive apartment complex on the property lines put, put up next to my single family home. So can we limit the height of the development with what's proposed? Not with standard zoning. And again, I, I understand your point about the surrounding homes, although any of them could be rebuilt as a two story home. But they won't be. <laughs> sure, but, <laughs> but, but for, have, for all residential, uh, including just, single family. Don't we just have a block away, two story buildings? Just, say that again. Don't we have block away, two story buildings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the old apartment complex is yes, but the, what's mm -hmm. different about that, that development is that it's, it has street buffers around it. This has, this has single family that, that butts two sides of it. I mean, yeah, it's on it. It is on, and, and with our setback requirements, uh, what is it, side, side setback, what is it, five feet mm -hmm. on a commercial? For multifamily? I mean, yes, it's, I believe it's, it's, it's not going to be for multifamily. And yep. so that's, that's my primary concern, is we get a, 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 a development that is at the absolute boundaries 
of what's allowed by, by zoning right uh, put on this lot, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't support that. I do support putting six units on here if you can squeeze them in single story. Um, that, that quite simply kind of where I, I stand on it. So can we put a restriction for height or not? No, not with standard zoning. <clears throat> we could look at options. I think it's too small for a planned development. Um, I don't the, know that the other a... the other option is they could come back and do a conditional use on top of a CN. The conditional use for household living would allow us to put conditions, but she'd have to come back again. Okay. <clears throat> Jeff, is there a do you do you know what the floor area ratio is there? Because that would also if if somebody did decide to go two stories, yes, sir, that would further limit the amount they could put on the site. Right. So if they did decide to go two stories, that would be fewer total units. Um, I don't know if that helps, but there, okay. there's a maximum square footage that you can have, and so a second story counts double against that square footage. So if they did RM1, they would get up to 75% of the floor area ratio. If they kept it as CN, I guess it would be, they would be limited to 60%. I guess we could look at as a condition, but staying on topic, yeah, they can do 75% right now. And that, again, with parking and setbacks, they're going to be potentially more limited than that anyway, but that's the maximum. I just don't see how you can get six units on that without without it being two story. That's my concern. Recommendations. Yeah, and, I, and I, I might need to look back over our notes, but I know when they had tried for the zoning to see in, um, which, which they got, I believe they had applied also for a conditional use or wanted to apply for a conditional use for a residential unit in there. Now, that was, that was one unit in a, on the top of a commercial building, and they were going to do two floors. Right. I'd have to double check if that got passed or not. I know they never went through, so it's expired. So there is, there is a presence of residential um, applications being approved. In that case, it was, it was for one unit in a mixed-use building. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't mind that as much if you could just due to the density. Yeah. I, and that's... Less than half an acre lot. That's just what I keep coming back to in my mind is the density is my only concern. I, the use is great. I'm, I would love to have multifamily or, or duplex or townhome or something on this lot, <clears throat> I just don't, I, I really think a two-story structure would not fit this area. It's, it is packed in tight with uh, single-family lots on either side of it. And just, just speaking again from the planning side of things, it would be up to them to be able to show us a plan that, you know, when they come in that, that meets that. If they don't, then we would Obviously, they wouldn't be able to move can we, forward. Can we adopt a, a site plan with a condition for zoning? No. No, with zoning, you're approving that zoning district and whatever's allowed in that. It would have to be something like a plan development or conditional use. Uh, those are the only tools you have that could limit. Okay.
Okay. Are you making a motion to approve? Okay. She made a motion. She's made a motion to approve. I'll second the motion. All right. So we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. So it's going to be 4-2 okay. to approve it. Okay. All right. Conditional uses. The Planning Commission has final authority for approval of conditional uses. Appeals may be directed to the City Council. CU 2217, 205 Crestwood Drive, a request for approval of a conditional use to allow a short-term rental in the single-family residential zoning district located at 205 Crestwood Drive. Good morning, Commissioners. Ray Lineberry, Planner. And for this first one, we have a short-term rental. It's RS1 zoning. It's in District 1, uh, Mr. Hebert and Glenmore neighborhood. A uh, picture of the house, the front of the house, and then the street view. Um, it has plenty of parking. The, the street width is, is perfect, probably a little too much. Um, 22 mo notices were mailed out. We had one in favor, and it actually is two opposed. We received one more this morning. Um, I'm not sure on this one, but the other opposed just didn't want a lot of in and out traffic. Um, other than that, uh, she said she was okay. She just didn't want a lot of in and out. Um, the impact, there, there really is no changes to existing structures. Um, there is no active short-term rental within 500 feet, and it would be in the single-family residential zoning area. Um, there's no foreseen adverse effects on the environment. The short-term rental will address a need for more rentals in this area, and um, it, there really is no impact. So we are recommending approval for this short-term rental with the following conditions. They maintain the parking. They maintain um, uh, operation in a manner consistent with single-family and they will need a fire marshal inspection and a building inspection for a change of occupancy. Okay. And Anyone I do questions? believe the owners are here if you have any questions. Okay. You want to have questions for the staff? Thank you, Ray. Okay. We'll open it up for public comment. If you wish to speak, please come forward, state your name and address or single member district. All right, I'm going to close public comment. And uh, if anyone wants to share thoughts or make a motion. Make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. CU 2218, 1817 South A&M Avenue. A request for approval of a conditional use to allow short-term rental in the single-family residential zoning district located at 1817 South A&M. Okay. And this one is also a short-term rental in the residential RS1 zoning, District 5, Miss Hesse Smith, and it's in the ASU College Hills area. Um, I couldn't get a very good picture. Um, the... The, there was quite a few businesses going on, um, but there is adequate parking. You can see the Jeep and the truck is parked in the driveway, so they have plenty of parking in the driveway. Um, the, the street width is, is pretty good. Um, and we did send out 20 notices. We received actually one in favor um, as of this morning, and then the two opposed. I did speak to one of the opposed. Um, the one behind, and they were just, again, worried of parties and traffic and, yep. and everything. Um, and then it, it is absolutely the same. There's, they plan on no changes. There's no active short-term rentals within 500 feet. It is in single-family residential zoning. No foreseen adverse effects. Um, we do need more rentals within ASU College Hills area. And... Um, 
they, ha they have the same recommendations of the off-street parking um, and the maintain the zoning ordinance and they will need an inspection with the fire marshal and the change of occupancy. Okay. Anyone have questions for the staff on this one? Thank you, Ray. I'm going to open it up for public oh, comment. We recommend approval. No. Oh, I'm Ray Lineberry, planner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what I did to the... All right. I'm going to open it up for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak on this case, please come forward. All right, I'm gonna close public comment. Um, we've, uh, we've reviewed and approved a lot of short-term rentals uh, in the time that I've served on the Planning Commission. And uh, as I've stated before, I think, I think the conditions uh, that are set in place for approving these are good, are good for our community. Um, this is, we're, we're granting uh, if we approve this, a one-year uh, authorization for short-term rental. Um, after a year, the applicant would have to return uh, to the Planning Commission to, to renew, uh, at which time we will look at um, any, uh, any issues with city departments uh, or the, the police department, uh, fire department, if, there's, if there have been consistent reports of nuisance or issues with the property, that would be factored into our renewal of any short-term rental. Um, and then obviously having a building inspection and a change of occupancy, uh, fire marshal inspection, uh, that, that standard exceeds uh, what a property owner would be required to do if they wanted to just rent their house for a long-term rental. So um, on, that, on that basis, I'm going to Take a motion or other thoughts? Second. All right, so we have a, a motion and a second to approve as presented. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. Public comment. Issues or concerns not on the regular agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak at the podium, address all comments to the dais, and begin by stating their name and address or single member district. Please limit all remarks to less than three minutes. I'm going to open up public comment for anything you wish to discuss. I'm going to close public comment. Uh, next item is the director's report. Uh, the only thing I have, I think Jeff had talked with some of you before the meeting about uh, potential alternative dates for the December meeting. Yes, sir. Uh, because of the availability of, of this room and the, and the uh, convention center. Um, so uh, I think you're already familiar with that, but we'll be sending out more information if you all could let us know uh, if, if those alternative dates work for you, and then we can schedule that. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, future meeting and agenda. The next regular meeting of the Planning Commission is scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. on Monday, November 21st, City Hall, East Mezzanine Room, 72 West College Avenue, adjournment. Does anyone wish to make a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0. It's 10-14 a.m. Thank you all.